You've heard of the sine wave. It's really much simpler than you think. Just look at the up-down coordinate of a moving point and match it and you have a sine wave. So the Y coordinate on a moving point going up and down with that point that's circling traces out a sine wave. So let's try this in Scratch. That's where I made this program you're looking at. And just trace out a circle by turning and moving. That's the command, basically just turning and moving. Now just match the up-down point, the Y position. There's really just one command here that's set Y to Y position of circle pen. That matters. That's the command that's making the sine wave. That's it. You haven't even done any trigonometry and you're getting a sine wave. Now the sine wave happens to be the motion of the pendulum. And if we just match the X position, which is the same idea, the X position, left right position of a circling point and see the purple swinging pendulum below is just matching the X coordinate. I have an extra little command to make it curve a little. But basically it's just set X to X position of the circle pen. When you do that, you get this little pendulum motion at the bottom. It slows down at the extremes and goes fastest in the middle. Same with the sine wave. It slows down at the top and bottom and goes fastest in the middle. And that's how you characterize the sine wave. So we've got the pendulum and the sine wave coming from a simple circling motion. Now, let's look back at our diagram, which I also did in simple scratch code. And notice that the sine wave goes just as high as the circle because I'm exactly matching the Y coordinate of the circling pen. And the pendulum's exactly matching the X position of the circling pen. And with that, you can learn a lot about the relation of an angle to the length of a line. The relation of an angle in a right triangle to the length of a line in that triangle. The up-down position is essentially a length that corresponds to an angle. So here I was going up to 90 degrees. Here I'm trying to stop it at 90. I overshot it, it's 95. Now let's try 180, 180 degrees. Two hundred and seventy degrees approximately, and all the way to three hundred and sixty degrees, which is the same as zero. And for each of those degrees you get a value for Y. Now the sine function we can use in Scratch to make the circle. We can just set the Y to the sine of the degrees and then we set X to the cosine of degrees and a cosine is just a version of the sine. And now we have the XY position of a circle. Now you can do this same diagram, fancy diagram that looks like a pie chart with the angles and the fancy sine curve without any trigonometry, much like we did before. That's what I'm showing here. I didn't actually enter any sine or cosine function this time. Just have a circling point and having a red pen here trace the Y coordinate of that circling pen. And from that we can learn a lot about the sine function but also the cosine function which is the x position 
The x is the cosine of the angle. Here we have the cosine as a blue line and the sine as a red line and you see it's a little triangle. This is what you're usually taught in trig. It shows very clearly how the length of the red line is the sine of the angle within a circle and the cosine, which is the blue line here, is the length of the line on the x-axis. A simple way to learn trigonometry, the sine wave, and code.